In 2021, while drilling about 11 feet beneath the surface of permafrost in northeastern Siberia, researchers uncovered a 24,000-year-old frozen life form. And then, they brought it to life. Before cloning it, or better said, it cloned itself. This might sound like the beginning of a sinister horror story, but don't worry, it's actually quite the opposite. What scientists unearthed was a microscopic frozen organism that could fundamentally reshape what we think about evolution and survival. The uncovered tiny creatures are called bedeloid rotifers, microscopic animals with little wheel-like mouths that they use both for moving and feeding. They were first discovered in 1696 and are fairly common in freshwater environments around the world, with a few saltwater species. They might seem unremarkable, but scientists have been studying them since early microscopes made it possible to actually see them. Because even though there are only a few dozen microns wide, they're surprisingly complex, with brains, guts, muscles, and reproductive systems. Could it be that within that complexity lies the secret to ultimate resilience? Maybe even for us humans? Let's break it down. These creatures are extremophiles. That means they can survive being completely drained of water at any point in their life cycle, then lie dormant until rehydrated. But that's not all. They can also persevere through some of the harshest conditions on Earth, or in outer space, or even being stuck in the Siberian permafrost wasteland for tens of thousands of years. This is possible because they can enter cryptobiosis, a condition where organisms pause their metabolism and become nearly inactive. It may sound sciency, but actually, some of the everyday products we eat are stored in a fridge thanks to this phenomenon. Take yeast, for example. Live yeast cells are surrounded by a protective layer made of dead cells and some nutrients. You can keep yeast at room temperature, but if cryptobiosis comes into play in the form of your fridge or freezer, it stores much better and longer. During cryptobiosis, rotifers accumulate protective compounds like chaperone proteins, which help them repair and recover once favorable conditions return. Chaperone proteins are like tiny bodyguards. Their job is to keep other proteins in the cell from falling apart under pressure. When the body is stressed, whether from heat, cold, toxins, dehydration, or just the natural aging process, the proteins inside our cells can start to misfold. Proteins need to be folded into very specific shapes to function properly, and when that structure breaks down, they become useless, or worse, harmful. Misfolded proteins can pile up and interfere with normal cell function. In some cases, they clump together in ways that poison the cell. This kind of damage is even linked to serious health conditions. So, if rotifers have developed powerful proteins that prevent cellular chaos even under extreme conditions, could we use them to protect human cells from diseases and aging? By analyzing the age of the ice they were found in, scientists figured out that these frozen rotifers were at least 24,000 years old. That's a huge leap from earlier studies, which showed they could survive frozen for only about 10 years. Now that's what you call record-breaking. This period of Earth's history is known as the Late Pleistocene Epoch, a time dominated by the Ice Age, which means these invertebrates were lying dormant when Manny and Sid were having their adventure while roaming the icy landscapes, along with saber-toothed cats and giant ground sloths. Fun fact, although animated movies like Ice Age show woolly mammoths as huge, towering giants, they were actually about the same size and weight as today's average African elephant. Nature and evolution can be so cruel, yet fascinatingly unpredictable. Massive, menacing beasts that came from the Ice Age couldn't survive it. Yet something tiny and weird, like a bedeloid, could. But regarding our unfrozen creature, after the soil thawed, the organism didn't just begin moving again, it also started reproducing. This is thanks to an ability called parthenogenesis, a specific form of reproduction in which embryos develop from unfertilized eggs, allowing them to reproduce independently. It really is like cloning, but it happens naturally. 
Many organisms, such as certain insects, reptiles, and even some birds are capable of parthenogenesis, at least under specific conditions. For example, in honeybees, males develop from unfertilized eggs through parthenogenesis, making them genetic copies of their mother. However, parthenogenesis is often seen as an evolutionary disadvantage because it limits genetic diversity, meaning that most species that reproduce this way eventually face extinction. Despite this, Bedelloid rotifers have diversified into over 450 distinct species over millions of years, which is extremely rare. Scientists believe their survival comes down to a few evolutionary adaptations. They can pause their metabolism through cryptobiosis, repair their DNA with specialized proteins, and even borrow useful genes from other organisms using a process called horizontal gene transfer. Unlike most animals which rely solely on inherited DNA, these organisms can steal genetic material from bacteria, fungi, and even plants, splicing foreign genes into their genome to gain new survival traits. Some studies have shown that up to 10% of their active genome comes from foreign DNA. This could explain their extraordinary resilience. They borrow genes for stress resistance, toxin breakdown, or radiation repair. Essentially, patching and upgrading their DNA in real time. It's not like the Mind Flayer from Stranger Things where the creature absorbs another organism to improve itself and grow. It's more like a spy stealing a blueprint from a rival lab to learn its secrets. When cells rupture, for example, when bacteria die nearby, bedelloids scoop up loose DNA fragments and integrate them into their own genome. Interestingly, the usual expected lifespan of bedelloid rotifers under normal circumstances is only two weeks. The soil sample that contained these rotifers also held nematodes or roundworms, another group of tiny survivors already known to withstand tens of thousands of years icebound. This isn't just limited to microscopic animals. Researchers have successfully regrown Antarctic moss and entire campion plants from seeds and samples frozen for hundreds or even thousands of years. In 2016, a team of Japanese scientists brought tardigrades, or simply water bears, back to life after 30 years in cryptobiosis. Tardigrades are even more impressive because they can live in a suspended state for up to 30 years, without food or water, and with temperature swings from deep freeze to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. These guys can also endure crushing deep sea pressures, vacuum, microgravity, and intense radiation of space. Remember when we said earlier that these species can survive the harshest conditions on Earth and beyond? It wasn't an exaggeration, and now you understand why. And it's exactly why NASA and its partners sent water bears and bedelloid rotifers into orbit. They've even been aboard the ISS, helping scientists understand how these animals handle microgravity, radiation, and stress. Not only that, but in 2007, the European Space Agency launched a bunch of tardigrades into low Earth orbit, completely exposed. No suit, no shield, floating in a vacuum. They were blasted by cosmic radiation, UV light 1,000 times stronger than what hits Earth's surface, and temperatures near absolute zero. And when they came back, most of them woke up and reproduced despite the harsh conditions they were exposed to. This ties into an old theory called panspermia, the idea that life didn't originate on Earth but arrived here, locked in space dust or trapped inside a meteorite. Before, maybe it sounded like a fringe science, but when organisms can brush off cosmic radiation, then it doesn't seem so far-fetched, does it? What about humans? Does this mean we now fully understand the way hibernation works and are close to putting humans in this state? Sorry for spoiling it for you, but it still feels more like science fiction. However, researching rotifers, water bears, and similar organisms can lead to massive breakthroughs in other fields. Their resilience might be a blueprint, a blueprint for medicine, for reshaping what it means to age, maybe even to pause life itself or extend it. We're talking real, practical innovations, from better preservation of human organs for transplantation to drugs that slow aging at the cellular level. 
and yes, maybe even cryogenic hibernation long enough to make interstellar travel possible. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.